time to take a look at the latest business headlines. Well, with that, we're going to bring in business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor Seth Denson, as well as accounting professor at Montclair State University, Dan Geltrude. Good morning, gentlemen. So those markets, they kicked the week off, closing up the, the Dow now into a day 11 of its rally. This morning, futures are also up ahead of the opening bell. Okay, so a stark warning for the housing market. A Yale University economics professor predicting the decade-long rally in home prices may finally come to an end. Seth, I'm going to start with you first. So could things finally turn in favor of home buyers? I think it, it's really, we'll see, Alex. I think the idea here is that as interest, it, there's this, been this flood of people going out and buying houses for fear that interest rates are going to keep rising. And if, if the Fed finally does tamper that, well, then maybe people will pull back and say, okay, we'll, we'll hold off. The reality is we're still millions of houses short on inventory. People are trying to get out of rent life. Mm. And I think that if, if uh, interest rates stabilize, I don't see that changing. Real quick stat for you. On average, over the last 50 years, house prices have gone up 4 and a half percent per year. In the last 10 years, it's over 50 percent. Hmm. Wow, Seth. Um, so let's talk the IRS announcing yesterday it's ending its controversial practice of unannounced visits to homes or businesses. Dan, I mean, is this part of a broader IRS overhaul? Tell us more about what's going on. Sure. This was never a good policy by the IRS to be showing up at people's homes or businesses, particularly their homes, it, it really has become an issue where it could be dangerous for both the taxpayer and the IRS representative. So I think it's a good thing that this is now going to drop out of the picture. Mm. As far as whether this is part of a broader plan by the IRS, I believe it is. As we've talked about before, the IRS did get additional funding in order to hire more employees. And on top of that, uh, from what I'm hearing, the IRS is looking down the path of AI. And that certainly could be a game changer for both the IRS and taxpayers. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the big news yesterday. Of course, Twitter's transition to X. Seth, I mean, you never exactly know what Elon Musk is about to do. Uh, what do you think he's hoping to accomplish here? Well, it'll be interesting to see what the next iteration of Twitter is, right? Elon said he's changing it to X because it's going to be the everything app. Well, what is everything? I'm, I'm really curious to, to know what that is. And I'm assuming that at some point we'll find out uh, what everything really is. Interestingly enough, again, I'm going to give you some numbers here, Alex. It's early and we're doing some math here. <laughs> But if you look at Facebook, right, which Elon and is really in battle with over Meta, if you look at Zuckerberg's Facebook, it's currently evaluated at about $750 billion. They've got 3 billion users. That's $250 per user is the valuation. Elon bought Twitter at $40 billion, right? So at that evaluation based on his 450 million users, that's about $88 per user. So in his mind, he got a deal. If he can get up to Facebook's per user uh, valuation, that would put it over $112 billion. Oh my goodness. I mean, certainly he's got a little way to go when you make that comparison right there. Um, well, during the pandemic, the biggest workplace trend was quiet quitting. And now workers are going to the other extreme with something called loud quitting. But Dan, I mean, experts are not exactly recommending this. No, uh, listen, both are less than ideal. To start with, with quiet quitting was just people kind of riding the wave, not doing anything and getting paid. This particular case is you have an employee that quits and on the way out starts to blast their employer on social media. This is a terrible idea for many reasons. Uh, most importantly, the person who's actually doing this, what happens when your new employer or your the prospect of a new employer reads that you're doing this? Right. So you're only hurting yourself. I say keep it classy. Yeah, and I mean, things are online literally forever. They always say never trash your former company that you work for, and then now you're putting it on the Internet. Um, so remember those unsold Yeezys that Adidas started to sell and just try to unload? Well, they actually brought in half a billion in sales for the athletic brand. I mean, Seth, are you surprised by this? And is Adidas still giving some of those proceeds to charity? I I'm not surprised because they were nostalgic the second that you bought them, right? Because they weren't going to make any more. And so, yeah, people that were really 
really into shoes and fashion, i.e. maybe Dan Geltrude. I don't know if he bought any, but I know he's into his shoes. Uh, bought, bought these things up. Now, interestingly enough, to your point, Alex, they are going to donate about $9 million of the proceeds, about 2%, to charities in the U.S. and China, which is good. Could maybe do a little bit more, but that's all right. <laughs> Something is better than nothing. There, uh, yeah, something's better than nothing. Uh, Seth Denson, Dan Gelger, thank you both for coming on this morning. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Alex. All right, well, a